May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace. And may the Lord always be with you. In the waters of baptism, Mary died with Christ. May she rise from death to new life. And may she share her spiritual life. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who will survive? Oh, you will show forgiveness for this fear of you. Mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt. Cleanse me of my sins. My offenses truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is even in your sight, I have done. Indeed, you love truth in the heart. Then in the secret of my heart, teach me wisdom. O oh, purify me, then I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be white from snow. Make me here rejoicing in gladness, that the bones you have crushed may thrill. From my sins, turn away your face. And not out all my guilt. A pure heart create for me, O God, with a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit.
Mary's life, and neighbours and friends, and particularly those who will be joining us on Zoom here today, who are most welcome to join in our celebration, and we're delighted to have you, even though distance divides us. You, we know that you're always with us in a very, very special way. So at the very beginning of our Mass, now we're going to call on Maria and Michael, please, to address us and give us a little bit of the history of Mary's wonderful life. You do please come forward. Someone 
that matches um, her in this. Mary O'Callaghan always knew the right person to talk to. When Grandad McCarthy passed away in 2004, our auntie Anne was travelling in India and was uncontactable at the time. Mum only knew one person in India who just happened to be the Honorary Consul General of Ireland. Dr. Grand Masanda Shaw was able to find Auntie Anne up a mountain and get her home in time for the funeral. After Dad's passing in 2016, Mum's sleeping routine was a little bit all over the place. Now, to be fair, she was a night out, night out anyway. But when she was up in the middle of the night, she would always had a friend or a niece across the world to be catch up with. Mum loved to travel. She and Dad would travel all over the world, and as kids, Marie and I were lucky to be able to travel with them. We spent the last night reminiscing, and I think we could both agree that we were very, very lucky kids. After Dad's passing, Mum was determined to continue working through their retirement bucket list, and she enjoyed trips to the UK, US, and South America, to name a few. She took us along during her most, most recent trip to Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, and lockdown. <laughs> and in 2021, she set herself the challenge of recreating a blog about the trip on Facebook a year on. Mum was full of determination, and even though her last post on her blog was delayed by a week due to her recent stroke, she managed to complete it and complete her challenge. At the time, Marie and I thought, said we would change the order for her, but we decided to leave it, in, uh, leave it as it is in her memory. Mum had a ridiculously unique sense of style. We always loved her confidence and the use of colour when it came to her outfits, accessories, and most recently her hair, which would brighten any situation. Mum had a unique ability to sh shop internationally before that became a thing. Mum, however, also believed in getting rid of nothing because there was always the chance of coming back in style. She wasn't wrong. Over the past few days, my family and I have received the most beautiful, heartfelt condolences. A relative who shall remain unnamed described Mum perfectly by saying, she drove us all mad at times, but she always had her infant's best interest at heart. Mary O'Connor was the matriarch. She deeply cared about her family. She was the planner and organizer, and her opinion and approval, approval was always valued. She was the one who would always remember her birthday. This was probably one of her greatest talents, numbers and dates. This level of detail was always essential to every story. Mum and Dad were a match made in heaven, even if it took her a while to realise he wasn't a pilot, or that, name was actually, or that his name was actually Daniel. That particular fact didn't come to light until her wedding day. Mum was heartbroken when Dad had sudden passing, and continued to remember it daily. Last Tuesday after Mum had passed, Maria decided to take a walk out to the garden and saw two robins flying around the bedroom, and just laughed. That was the sign we needed to know that they had found each other again, and that all was right again. Mum was no doubt trying to fix Dad's collar or cut a loose thread and he was there to stop that one. This pandemic has meant that we can't breathe as we normally would. We cannot honor our traditions as we normally would have, but that doesn't mean we cannot in the future and we all have this to look forward to. I think we can all agree that Mary O'Connor was a creature of habit, so after we have all said our farewell to this formidable lady, my family and I would invite you to come to Perry Street for any skinny on your way home and enjoy a takeaway coffee, tea and cake on Mary O'Connor, just like she did every Sunday after Mass, just for today, be a creature of habit too. Thank you. Dustpan, brush, jade cloth. Mam's house was absolutely spotless. 
And I have anything about We won't judge anything above five foot two. <laughs> but when Mum would return home for business trip, Maria, or myself, Maria, and Dad used to bet on how long it would take her to pick up the jig cloth and start cleaning. A coffee cup. Mum's ultimate treat was a latte and a slice of cake with a scoop of ice cream. She always enjoyed meet, looking forward to meeting family and friends at her favourite coffee spot at the workshop at the end of the room. A magnet. To acknowledge Mum's love for travel, today we offer a magnet in recognition of Mum and Dad's last Arctic cruise, which held so many lasting memories. And finally, our family photo. Mum loved her family. It wasn't her way to say directly, but we all knew. We're all looking to have shared special memories forevermore.
Second reading. A reading from the first letter of John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge Him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He really is. The Word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please stand and read the gospel. My father Pat to read it and read it. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. My dear friends, we're here as we know to celebrate the life of a great lady, Mary O'Callaghan, named McCarthy. I did Mary a great favour ever before I met the good lady, because I was stationed in Lebanon with the UN, and Donald came to me and he said, uh, Des, I'm getting married. And I said, don't worry, you're not on. And uh, I said, somebody I know says, no, you never met her. And uh, I says, do you really want to marry her? <laughs> and he says, if you do, she's the love of my life. So I did Mary the greatest favor of all because I did his marriage papers in the poor and we sent him home. And then after some time, we actually met Mary. And uh, Mary was a regular attender here at Mass. And she was a fantastic, 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 fantastic person. And then uh, to leave this world at the age of 67 is very, very young. And the reason I give the exact age is because Mary was 67 on the last day of March, only a month ago. And we always had a little, little bit of banter here because, uh, as Father Pat would tell you, only God knows what comes out of my mouth at a homily. <laughs> but uh, on Mary's birthday, and if it was near anywhere near the Sunday, I would always say that today is Mary O'Callaghan's birthday. And uh, Mary is uh, just a shade over 21. But she happens to be a long time in the shade. <laughs> And then from the congregation you'd hear Mary saying, yes, but I'm ten years behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a running joke we had. But we picked, I picked today's uh, gospel for the same that it is the Beatitudes. Because it really, I think, when you go through them bit by bit, it kind of sums up Mary's life. 
Happy are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Mary was never really attached to material goods. Her material goods was her husband, her two children, her two grandchildren, David, Sally, and her extended friends, which were many, but are known here in Ireland, but all around the world. Happy are the gentle. She was very gentle. Particularly, you can see that in the children. Because I, I remember when, when Michael was a young child. And then, uh, oh boy, Michael, are you going to get it now? <laughs> because I can tell you quite honestly, he was as wild as me. <laughs> and I'd be up here on a Sunday and he'd be going under this bench, over that bench, and over the other bench, and I'd hear my smiling at him and I'd say to myself, if I had my chance, I'd nail you to the floor. <laughs> Yet, Mary was so, so gentle with her, always bringing him back, and the, the sign of what, what, what she was. Those, happy those who mourn, they should be comforted. Mary was always there for people, in times of difficulties, in times of struggle. And she was there, not in an imposing way, but in a way that she was, you know, you knew she was there, and if you needed her, she was there. Happy are those who hunger and thirst for what was right. That one definitely suits me because if she thought something was right and, and it wasn't happening, she'd be very soon let you know. Happy the merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, and by God she would be a peacemaker between those two. <laughs> Thank God her husband, Donald Sarah, and you ran and was great help to me. <laughs> Happy those who persecuted for the cause of right, Mary always supported anything that was right and just. And so my dear friends, that's kind of a small little a, a, a summary of what she was like. But today is a sad day, because we're losing a friend, they're losing a, a mother. In some ways, I think Mary is happy for the simple reason she's going back to dawn. And they were a very, very young couple. But my dear friends, I often say this when I'm at a funeral. This is not the end. This really is only the beginning of a life which each and every one of us are going to be called to in some time. But the question is this, and an interesting question is because it's a question only I can answer for myself, I have a to only answer for myself, and only you can answer for yourself. And the question is this, are you prepared to die? If the answer to that question is yes, happy days. If it's not, these are the occasions when the Lord above gives us the opportunity to look into our lives. Because as sudden as Mary's death was, <clears throat> that particular day, the morning that she died, she was due to come over to my house here for Korea and the two boys were going to have a cup of coffee and we would chat in a bit of an afternoon because I hadn't seen her since she had taken the stroke and was not well and I took her forward half of the afternoon we would chat so I was forward. And I had just kind of come back from the shops when Shane ran me to say, bad news, Mary's passed away. I couldn't hear you from the morning with the shop. But the, the beauty of a thing like that is this. It gives us the opportunity to say, does it matter when we're going to die, how we're going to die, where we're going to die, why we're going to die, none of that matters. It does matter, are you, am I, prepared to die? And I'm going to end up by saying one thing, and that is, as I knew Mary O'Callaghan, Nina Carter, Mary was one girl that was definitely ready to go. She was prepared to go. Didn't possibly want to go. But as I always say, man proposes, God disposes. But the man of God has decided at a certain time, each and every one of us are going. We cannot stop it. And Mary was one lady that was prepared to go. Mary, I just said to you, we turn our
grant unto you, and may you enjoy your heavenly home with your husband and all, as we say it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Lord of the Spirit. My dear friends, now I'm going to invite Dunham, Dunham and McCarthy, Lane McCarthy, Anna Deneen, Mary Barlow, Shane Anderson, Barry Owen, and Nicola Gleason, please, if you'd come forward and read for us today's prayers of the faith. Savior, 
may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, and the mighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended. But when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made for them in heaven. And so the angels and our angels, the thrones and dominions, and all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall. So that there may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of him. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Hinton, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember Mary and Catherine, and have called from this world to yourself. Remember also our husband, donor, and parents, and all the deceased members of the Carthy and Carthy families. Welcome the Lord into the joy of your resurrection. Of mercy in us all, we pray that the Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit and coerce to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. So together we say, through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Now in song, let us stand and pray the prayer that our Savior himself gave us, our Master. Thank you. 
Peace of the Lord be always with you. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and the rest of us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and the rest of us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and the rest of us. Please need. May the receiving of your body and blood of our Jesus Christ not bring me to judgment and condemnation. Through your loving mercy be for me, protection of my body and the healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to the future down under my roof, but only say the word for my soul to you. For the body and blood of Christ keep me safe.
when Michael and Maria were small, very obvious not on their little morning prayer, and it was very, very important to them as they all as they grew up. And then when Mary got back from Maria and David had Daniel and Luke, they passed on that tradition of saying the morning prayer. And it meant so much to Mary. <coughs> so I think what we might do, because Daniel is one great boy, maybe he might come over with Mammy and Daddy, and he will read for us. He will read for us the morning prayer, especially for him. Okay, let's stand this out and give you that. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? So that's easy.
So they meet again, and we are with Mary forever for the drive of eternal home. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, may the angels lead you into paradise, and the martyrs come to welcome you, and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Eternal rest grant to Mary, our Lord. Amen. And the rest in peace. And the very noble soul, so the Lord, may you the heart. Mercy of God, bless us in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank mm -hmm. you. 